Yeah, I think you did tell me about that one, yeah. and I like to hear that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how I met Buck the first time. Was there at Goshen Avenue, at Goshen in, in, in nearby Sage there. And that was, what was the club name? That was in 52. And he was on his way to Fresno when he first walked in. And I, had a, I think I had about uh, oh, 1,200 or 1,400 people in that hall with that night, you know. And he, he walked in and uh, said, uh, looked at me, you know, and I said, Buck, Buck, come up and play some numbers. He said, ain't got time. You got to go to Fresno. Just going to beer. I said, well, maybe the next time. Yeah, he said, so he got a beer and walked out. But uh, he's seen all that crowd there and everything, you know, and so uh, I had Red Belt fiddling for me at that time. We were doing all the Bob Will stuff, and I was doing uh, uh, all of the stuff in the 50s area, you know, and up in, in the uh, country thing, you know, such as they were. Boy Pierce and all them kind of guys, you know, and pick me up on your way down was one of those. <laughs> but anyhow, then the next time he came up, I got him up for five numbers on the bandstand. And then the third time he come up, three three weeks later, he bought a whole hall right out from under me. That old thing. Gave him $13,000 for that whole thing, see. Tell him about when Randy Travis came in. Huh? Tell him about when Randy Travis came in. Oh, well, that was uh, in, in Visalia. I had, I had my break and front end shop, and so on Sundays I'd go down there and, and call my band in, and we'd just practice like heck, you know, and get some stuff done. And, and so uh, we were in there practicing one night, one, one, one uh, morning, and about 10 o'clock, and uh, in walked uh, this lady, and she had this young kid with her, you know, about... 13 years old or something like that, 12 or 13, had a guitar as big as he was, and he <laughs> sat down over there, you know, and I looked at him and I said, son, what's your name? He says, Randy Travis. I said, oh, you play that thing? Yeah. And I said, you want to play something for us? I had the mics all set up. I sucked the mic and set it down over there, you know. So he said, oh, I'd rather stand up. I said, okay, so we stood, he stood up <laughs> playing that guitar. So about halfway through his tune, he forgot some of the words, you know. I said, well, wait a minute, hold it. So my fiddle player I said, hold it a minute. Let's go back and do this again. I said, okay, son, I just take it easy. And, and boy, he was just as nervous as he could be, you know. And so anyhow, he got through it, you know, and then he had another song that he wrote. I can't, I can't forget, I don't, I don't forget, I forget now exactly what it, exactly what they were. But uh, they were just simple tunes. So he got through that, and I said, well, man, that's real good. I said, boy, that's great. I said, and his uh, lady that was with him was an older lady. I found out that he married her later on. I guess he did. That's what she, they were supposed to. Mm. And that was his manager, so she was getting him started, see. And, uh, man, that, and he lived at Goshen out there, just six miles out of Isaiah West. But anyhow, that was, that's what happened there, so I thought you'd like to know about that. And, uh, so I've never seen Randy since then. I don't know whether he'll ever remember. Oh, you probably remember. Yeah, that. 13, you remember something like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, he was only 12, I think, at the time, so. But. I got a kick out of it because he was just nervous as, <laughs> as he could be, you know. <laughs> it's really something. Okay. So the, the three bit the three clubs were uh, Pumpkin Center. Okay. Tell, Pumpkin, tell me about the, the Pumpkin Center. Black uh, Pumpkin Center. Well, we played there on Friday nights and then sometimes we'd also laid around on Saturday night. Uh, we always played Saturday night at the blackboard. But Wednesdays and Fridays we change from there. Maybe we'd set Friday night at the Rainbow Gardens, and then go to Wednesday night out there at the Pumpkin Center. We'd the change up. Pumpkin Center was kind of a Quonset hut, like a World War II Quonset hut. Yeah, thing. yeah it's, it's still there. It's yeah. still there. It's still there. Oh, it is. And that side of the we used to call the it Miller's Cape. Uh -huh. Oh, and is that that's on Taft Highway or? <coughs> yeah. Oh, that's the look. <coughs> yeah, that's where it is. And, Just a uh, minute. Interviewing yeah. Lloyd. Let's see now, who was it that was? Lauren Green. She met Lauren Green out there, Anna did. 
Yeah, she met him and talked to him out there at, at that place later on. She said she met him, you know, of, of that program, you know, and she could tell you about that. What, what was it like playing at, at the Pumpkin Center? Pumpkin Center? Well, it's just like any honky tonk, you know, it's just, um, uh, was it as wild as the blackboard, or it was? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they were all wild. They, you know, because in this area, we had a lot of wildcatters from the oil fields, and boy, that was just right up their alley, you know. Coming in from and they, they lived, they lived in order to get there, you know, on Saturday and weekends, you know, on their days off. And so they came into Pumpkin Center to dance from the oil fields. Oh, yeah. And, the, and, and they the, just changed the around, in, you know. Picking the fruit. Yeah. And those those three groups right there were the ones that was doing it, you know. Us. That was it. And they had they had three horn bands, or two horn bands here. And there's 13 or 14 pieces in those. But they were big time. They were playing, the, you know, all of that big, high you much stuff, I thought, yeah. called, you know. And, and the gardens? But they were in the union. And so they struck and tried to get everybody in this town to go Union. And we were having a hell of a time, you know, to stay out of the Union. But we made it. We did. We finally resisted it and didn't go into the Union. But then when I left here then and went with the Rocky Mountain Cowboys, and I understand that Bob Manning left the area, and he was in the gospel pretty heavy, and he went down south for a while. And then he moved to Texas. And then he came back. And then he went back to Texas, and I don't know what ever happened to him after that, so, but I uh, traced him that way, so. And the Rainbow Gardens? No, he, no he, he drove the bus for the city. He, he's gone now, yeah. Tell him about the Rainbow Gardens. Yeah, what was the Rainbow Gardens like? The Rainbow what, Gardens. What was that? The Rainbow Garden, you know, that was, uh, I found out that we had a Rainbow Garden also from the same outfit up there. And there's one in Fresno, there was three of those up and down the valley. And I had one in Visalia. And it had 13, 14 piece ham horn band. You see, and they were the ones that were fostering that other, other uh, horn bands, you know, in here. And uh, so anyhow, they were this union and, and they, they, they struck. And they kind of made it hard on us guys, you know, for a while there. But I never did go into the union because, you know, I, they couldn't do us any good because all they do is just charge us money and that we, you know, it was hard for us to make money. They would cut into your profits, huh? Yeah, no yeah. profit left yeah. in it for us, you know, if we yeah. went into the union. Yeah. And they'd control the devil out of you too, don't think they did. You know? the, the Rainbow Gardens, though, become um, mm -hmm. another name, too. Huh? Here, the Rainbow Gardens become another name, too. And that's where old Maddox Brothers and Rose, the oh, yeah. Brothers, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. all of them played out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Rose. That was my time. For, uh, Maddox and Rose, wasn't that? I got a picture now of, uh, you know, when I was doing all the rodeo stuff in Visalia and uh, Corcoran and uh, Clovis. I did I did that with my band, you know. Mm -hmm. We did the rodeo stuff, too. Oh, okay, that's great. And Clovis and uh, Madeira. And... Uh, Anyhow, I got a picture there of, uh, of three times they came up at the Moose, Ro at the Moose Rodeo there. And uh, now we had lot, lots of people up in that Moose Lodge. We had, they had a 14-piece horn band, Jimmy Corms, in, in, the, in the bottom of that. And the top of it had a huge dance floor up there. And we packed in Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday night of the rodeo week. Wednesday night, we made them enough money to pay for that whole shebang. Just in, in my dance alone. Now, we had a few thousand people in there. And there was a lot of money flowing. You know. And um, we were very, very popular up and down the valley. I mean, we just, and rodeos, we did all of those and everything. And it was just a, a blast. Kind of like the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. The Beatles of the Valley. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we never, and, when, and, and I was so fortunate whenever uh, one one time in my shop, this guy walked in and I looked at him and I said, my God, don't tell me. And it was Joe Holly. <laughs>